Today's a big day. The van just cleared customs after surviving the long journey from Japan. It's time to head to New Hampshire and see it for the first time in real life. There will be surprises, some good. AC is blowing ice cold. I mean, that's normally considered the jackpot. And some bad. Pretty sure that that's mice droppings right there. But that's to be expected with something like this. Before continuing on, I want to give a special thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first thousand people to click the link in the description below will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. And then after that, it's only about $10 a month. I'm going to talk a little bit more about them, though, later in this video. The tire pressure indicator on this rental car has been going off basically since I got it. But it's like, the pressure is totally fine. Like, the indicator, like, the number is fine. <sighs> These new cars and all their fancy technology. I'm not sure if I'm more excited about seeing Nico, my sister's dog, later this evening, or about seeing what very well will more than likely become our next van in the next couple of hours. I have not seen it in person yet. I'm looking forward to getting eyes on it and really kind of poking around. I've seen a lot of pictures of this van. I've run the Car VX report, which is basically Japan's knockoff version of Carfax. I found auction sheets, so I mean, I do know a little bit about this van. It is a Toyota Hiace. It has a 1KZ TE turbo diesel engine in it, which is pretty rare for these campers. More often than not, they have the Toyota 3L, which is a naturally aspirated diesel engine in it. So the turbo is really beneficial in that it is an excellent engine for one. And then for two, just that it actually gives you enough power to like merge onto the highway. It's not super underpowered. So it'll drive a little bit more like a car. That being said, it's not a car, it's, it's, it's a high roof camper van and it is literally a class B RV. I mean, the thing has all the features of a camper in it, including like a shower area in the back, which I'm really, really excited to get eyes on. My biggest concern today though, is just getting underneath and kind of poking around. I brought a hammer, so I want to kind of bang on the frame a little bit to make sure that it's not super rusted. And then kind of checking the interior for leaks. There are definitely going to be a few issues. I already know about them. Uh, but it's going to be a project, guys. Like this thing's not going to be moving ready. It's going to be it's going to be a conversion. We're going to renovate this RV and get it ready for the road, and that's going to involve a lot of mechanical stuff as well as a lot of interior stuff. Here we go. I don't see it in the lock, so that means it's probably inside. has definitely been painted in here it looks like it was mostly just the cover-up surface rust though I don't it doesn't look like it's rotted or anything like that and that would be reported on the auction sheet when it was sold at auction in Japan so it's not perfect but I'm not super concerned about it at this point so like I said the interior is definitely gonna be a bit of a project Smells a little bit musty in here, which is to be expected of a 25 year old vehicle, especially one where the vent is literally ripped off here. <laughs> that is one of the problems that we're dealing with. I don't know if it happened in, uh, in transit when it was crossing the Pacific Ocean or if it happened before that or after it, but this is open. So fortunately the, the water that's leaked in from this vent being open just goes straight into the wet bath, which is designed to get wet. I mean, it's kind of neat that this kitchen slash wet bath area even exists i mean this is this is pretty cool it's like a little bathroom back here but there's also a propane stove there's no toilet or anything but this is designed to be like a shower area to be able to kind of rinse off and shower in i'm assuming we would probably try to keep this little bathroom area here but i don't know we got to really maximize the space and most of the stuff in here 
is gonna get ripped out. As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with a whole bunch of different classes and courses that you can take to learn how to do all sorts of different skills. Everything from photography, to filmmaking, to branding and marketing, to self-development, to web development. I mean, there are a lot of great resources on this platform. Last night, I took a course on brand identity and developing logos that can kind of evolve over time. The course is taught by Paula Scher. She is a graphic designer. And there were just some really awesome pieces of information in this course and some really cool stories as well. She's worked for Microsoft and a few other major brands in the past. And she kind of shared how she helped to reshape their identity through creating really interesting logos. And I figured it was very fitting for what's going on with the channel right now and in my life as we are kind of transitioning into this new van here. I'm a big fan of Skillshare and I definitely recommend checking them out. The first thousand people to click the link in the description below will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. And then after that, it's only about 10 bucks a month. Thank you again, Skillshare, for sponsoring these videos. I'm thinking we would retain a bed setup similar to this so that if we had like a little area to work underneath, maybe do like a couch or something along the back to increase storage space. And then I would be able to work underneath at night while I'm editing and then, you know, we'd be able to sleep up here and then just have like a trifold mattress that we could then stuff up front when we're not using it during the day. Basically just three pieces here fit right into place. And then I guess you kind of just prop yourself up. Oh jeez, I don't know how to get up here. Oh god, that's not easy. Oh yeah, this is not easy to do. <laughs> this is the idea though. I don't know, I think keeping a layout like this might be a legitimate option here. I mean, there's quite a bit of space here because it is a little bit lower than it has been in the other high aces that we've seen and in a lot of the other camper vans. Like, this is a pretty good sized bed. It's basically a full up here. We won't be able to have a super thick mattress and it will need to be like a folding mattress so that we can then stuff it up there during the day but I think this could work I mean there's it's pretty comfortable and these skylights up here really make it pretty neat I mean imagine falling asleep up here and just staring up at the stars somewhere camped remotely in the middle of nowhere it'd be pretty cool all right now it's time to get to work here I've been kind of just dilly-dallying around just looking at everything I got to get some measurements of the interior so that I can figure out some different layout ideas. It is going to take a couple of weeks. I know I mentioned this in the last video, but a big reason why we're going through an importer is because they're going to go through everything in here mechanically, clean it up on the exterior, any like rust stuff. He has a bodywork guy that he works with. So just trying to take care of any issues before we get on the road. I am going to have to drive this thing almost 2,000 miles basically the day after I buy it. So I want to make sure that it's ready to go. It is going to take some time. So in that meantime, I want to have measurements in here, dimensions, so that I can start brainstorming different ideas for how we're going to set up the camper conversion. I think this van has some leaky windows. You can see here that there's definitely some water damage. Looks like maybe this window is leaking somewhere back here as well. Maybe this is water damage, I can't really tell. Looks like shore power. Not sure that'll actually work here in the US. I might have to get some kind of a converter. And then I think this is propane. Looks like that's the control for the heater. But I did just find my biggest concern Pretty sure that that's mice droppings right there, which means that at some point there were mice in here. Hopefully not anymore. I think this is good news. Whew. Maintenance records, manuals. This is the original camper conversion manual right here. 25 years old. Think I can learn Japanese in the next two weeks? <laughs> so it looks like the shower system is designed to be outdoors. You see that? It's like an outdoor tent setup kind of thing. And look at the awning. I haven't even tested out the awning yet. I'm hoping that it works. I mean, normally when you buy a used car like this, 
finding a stack of the original owner's manuals and everything, I mean, that's normally considered the jackpot. This is everything here, guys. How to use the shower system, the water, the propane. It's all in here. It's just in the wrong language. All my camera batteries died. I think partially due to the relatively cold weather and then also because I forgot to charge two of them before coming here. Of all the days, of all the days to forget to charge two batteries, I'm mean, gonna have five, but I'm about to test drive the van. You guys are gonna have to excuse the sudden loss in camera quality. All right, here we go, test drive time. feels so smooth guys more good news AC is blowing ice cold granted it's like 35 degrees outside so it's kind of tough to know for sure but it feels pretty good and then the heat is working as well it drives pretty nicely you know for a 25 year old vehicle I don't think you can ask for too much more it's clean, it feels good, you know. There are definitely problems. Like I said a couple of times, it's going to be a project, but I think I could get used to this. I think we can do this. Looks like the previous owner left a cassette tape in here. Does anybody know this song? Just gets colder every day out here. It's almost snowing right now. A little bit of a flurry going on. My plan for the day today is to head down to Massachusetts. I have to return this rental car down there the day after tomorrow. But on my way down, I do want to uh, stop by the importer again one more time. Check out the van. There were a couple of measurements that I forgot to get. So what I did is I drew out these like really awful sketches on a piece of paper and I just kind of, so that I have a little reminder of what I'm really looking for and what I need to make sure that I get because I am going to try to draw out a couple of detailed layout options. I know there are a lot of issues with the camper and I think that is to be expected. This is a 25 year old camper. We knew that we were going to have to do some major renovations and it's looking like it's going to be one heck of a project. It's overwhelming to think about. I mean, gutting the entire thing, basically taking it down to bare metal, you know, maybe having to seal up some of the windows, which may or may not be leaking, as well as, you know, dealing with the vent fan that blew off in transit. Again, hopefully we'll be able to repurpose some of the stuff in there. The fridge, maybe we can reuse, maybe that wet bath area. And there is a diesel heater that seems to be working as well. But it's, it's going to be a project. I think I'm gonna end this video here while I'm halfway through my drive to look at the van for the second time. Let's just say that on this second visit, there were quite a few more surprises and it's getting to the point where there are just too many surprises for one video. I kinda wanna break it up and share it as part of next week's video. So stay tuned guys, there's quite a bit going on. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting Element Van Life and I am gonna probably share a couple of little teasers on Patreon as well. So if you want to know a little bit more about what's going on, feel free to head over there. I think that pretty much sums it up. I'll talk to y'all in the next one.